All right. Good morning, everyone, or almost afternoon. I'm Matthew Bean, and this is Managing Magento Environments with Ease. So we're going to talk about Mage Mojo here. And, but first, let's talk about me. Um, so <laughs> um, I'm a consultant at Mage Mojo, basically a uh, product owner of Stratus 3 right now until Marty takes it over again. Um, Magento Master 2016, been doing Magento for many, many years, and PHP even longer, and I've been using computers since basically almost birth, it seems like. Um, DevOps engineer, uh, Magento focused, but nonetheless, I love DevOps, and uh, I'm a Central Florida resident, escaped the hurricane, uh, along with my family, and uh, yeah, I'm here to talk about Mage Mojo. So in case anyone hasn't ever heard of Mage Mojo, it is a Kubernetes platform, uh, Kubernetes powered platform uh, that basically gives you a very solid Magento hosting uh, experience. Primarily focused on production at this time. Um, the challenge really has been to open this up for developers. Our CI CD cycle really, uh, and this is the same with cloud really, like we just sort of expect developers just to do it on their own. Uh, you know, you've got a VM or whatever, do the code, I don't care. Um, so we're, we're trying to open that up. That's Stratus 1 and 2 really focused on making sure the APIs were steady, uh, that we had good platform for everybody to use, and Stratus 3 really is focusing on opening that up for development and allowing development instances. So uh, Mage Mojo again, um, Magento Focus Hosting, Kubernetes powered, uh, microservice architecture, uh, really one of the, um, best in class microservices I've ever worked with. Uh, the, you know, they um, really have built out an, an incredible uh, backend for this. And uh, it's not incredibly obvious from, from the use of it. Um, but we're, we're changing that with Stratus 3. Uh, it's all event driven. Uh, there's several front ends you're using. If you use Mage Mojo, you log in on Magento, you end up in, a, in another app later. Um, we're unifying all of that. Uh, and we'll talk about how. And um, we talked a little bit about the API. We'll come back to the API stuff here in a little bit. Um, so what do I mean fully customized Kubernetes? Uh, I mean, they, they did everything. Network, drives, everything is uh, customized from the ground up to make Magento work really well. Uh, the environments are basically a collection of Docker containers, uh, which allows for um, basically service pods to be separated out into their basic services. And um, the storage is in ZFS. I don't know if anybody's used that file system, but it's amazing. Uh, this gives us the ability to basically snapshot the, the file systems live and restore those. And not just restore them, but actually send them to another place and restore them very, very quickly. Uh, this actually is one of the key components to Stratus 3 and how we're actually empowering the development instances to come up so quickly. Um, the API backends, while they were already mature, we had to actually add a lot to them uh, to allow for um, a more broad-based usage. And I'll come back to that, but basically there wasn't the granularity that you would expect at a hosting company uh, that's going to do development instances. Like agencies and um, merchants, they have different requirements than, than just a hosting platform. You have projects, you have clients, you have all these abstractions that you're actually working with to within your CICD lifecycle. So basically, Magento 1, still being used for all the billing and stuff, eventually we'll, we'll, we'll get rid of that. Uh, and AngularJS is actually the, the major Stratus control panel at this time. Um, this was really nice because we ended up building everything in React. However, having everything already in Angular means we already have those APIs. We're already using Crossbar to connect the APIs to the hosting or to the to the control panel. Uh, so swapping out to React was not that big of a lift. So what does this do for uh, Stratus 3? What are the objectives? What are we trying to actually do? We want it so that developers can basically just click a button and create a development instance, like almost instantly, maybe a minute or two tops, right? They don't want to have to insert the database. They don't want to have to download anything and, and make it work. We want it to just click and make it and it's there. Uh, this actually goes out further and will allow us to do branched creation of instances. So it can follow a branch. You could just have like a development branch and it would make a development server for you or a staging server, same deal. And the idea is that basically these pods, uh, you throw them out. 
you make a new one. And we'll come back on how that actually works in a little bit. So we used React. Anybody heard of React? Everybody using it yet? It's really cool. I absolutely love React. Um, it's actually the fastest, um, you know, to market platform I've ever seen. You can basically have something working almost instantly. Um, and it, you know, the, the, the orchestration that exists within it is really amazing. Um, we don't have time to go into that though. Um, so the APIs that we have, the backend APIs, we're starting to expose those um, so that you can do things like create an instance. So aim over that way apparently. Um, so um, the backend APIs, um, you, you, you have a customer um, and they have a site. Well, at MageMojo, this works great. You have a production box, we can actually host you, we'll, we'll migrate you there, everything's great. But now you want a developer to actually be able to create a branch. Well, the APIs didn't, didn't have any of this. So we've been, uh, Stress3 really has been focused on building out that and alongside the front end. So if you're going to actually build a hosting platform that's going to host Magento, if you're actually gonna host a lot of sites, you have to start thinking through these abstractions. How, how are you going to um, compartmentalize all the different customers and their sites? And uh, basically, I, I think we're going to end up raising the bar here because um, currently most places uh, expect you to create the box from scratch every time you make a new development environment. And what we're doing is we're actually just cloning the environments. And um, it's pretty amazing actually. Really fast, uh, we expect it to be under five minutes for even fairly large sites. Right now, it's a little longer, we're still working through the process and uh, I, I actually was gonna originally live demo some of this for everybody, uh, and if, if you want, afterwards, I'll be here for the next two days, please find me, I've got a laptop, it works, I'd love to show you guys. Um, it just wasn't to a point with this where we could. So, PWA, everybody's talking about progressive web apps here. Um, we decided that we would dive right into progressive web apps and design it from the ground up as a progressive web app. What this means is it actually works on a cell phone, on on a desktop, whatever, you can actually click the little plus button in the location bar and it will download it onto your desktop. So the Stratus control panel ends up being an app in your desktop or on your phone, which is super cool. Uh, compared to the old Stratus, uh, th this is a order of magnitude shift. Um, and once we start integrating all the features, uh, it'll be amazing. Nobody will wanna use the old panel anymore. Um, again, we re-envisioned the API to allow that granularity for projects because originally we had only thought about basically a store. Um, when you're hosting, you think, you know, I'm hosting a store, so I only need a store. But when you have development instances, you actually have more than a store. You've got developers working in different environments that have to eventually either go away or be promoted or whatever it is. Um, and so we had to actually create a, a more uh, widely accessible API that, that wasn't just tied to the stores. Um, and this is one of the key, I think, lessons that we learned um, as a hosting company is that, um, and, and, and Magento Cloud also sort of has the same very tightly coupled application to the hosting platform, which is, which is one of the things we're changing. <laughs> so the back end of Stratus. Um, and this really is Stratus three features. Um, we, I've already talked a little bit about the idea of projects, but we call them spheres, uh, stratospheres, in fact. Uh, this allows us to wrap the whole project in and have a production box, which has, we call it a main, uh, because we didn't want to use dev and we didn't want to use any of the other things everybody's using. Nobody used main, so we're going to call it main. And that's like your, that's basically like your main line to your, to your production box, wherever that is. Currently, we're only focusing on Stratus, but we expect long-term to be able to actually import from Nexus or Magento Cloud or anywhere else into Stratus so that you can do your development instances through the main box. Um, so basically, you have a production box. We don't want to touch that. We don't ever want to break that. We don't ever want to slow it down. We can instantly sync all the data from there using ZFS into your main box, and from there, we can scrub change the data as needed so that all your development instances can be instanced from that main box. Um, this totally different than any other platform I've ever seen. And uh, what this does is actually open up sort of the floodgates for development uh, because 
cloning main is almost instantaneous. Once you have it in that um, main box, you should be able to just put it into the other boxes immediately by copying Z file system. We're gonna tie in the source control manager so we, you can have Git or Bitbucket or whatever you're using. Um, this will allow it to actually, you'll be able to pick branches out of those and it will clone the box, check out the correct branch, rebuild, and just be ready for you. Um, and, and again, granular permissions on users. So originally, we really had envisioned hosting to be basically single user, maybe, maybe multiple users with the same thing, but really what it comes down to is if you're an agency, you'll have a lot of different clients and projects and you wanna be able to get access to all of them through a single account. So we had to add that granularity. Um, my button no longer works. Nope. <gasps> we went too far. I'm not sure where I was. I gotta go back one more. Oh, this is just, okay. One more click and we're good. Come on. Yes. yes. <laughs> so one of the things I was gonna demo was Stratuslink. This is an amazing piece of technology. It's basically based on Mutagen. However, we did some modifications to it as to allow us to use it on Kubernetes, which is remote. Normally, Mutagen, which is used by Magento Cloud in their Docker environment, is made to connect to local Docker environments. This allowed us to actually create a file system on the Kubernetes box and transport it locally to your box, wherever you're working. So you're editing local files. So your PHP Storm or whatever IDE you're using is editing local files. And it doesn't know the difference. And when you save them, Mutagen just pops the files up. And Stratus Link's pretty amazing. Uh, it's, it's basically like instant save. And uh, really neat to see it actually in action. I, I had planned on showing it too. <laughs> so again, find me, because I, I do have a working demo of this and I'd be happy to show everyone. Um, automated development instances by branch. Again, you know, yeah, um, you may have a pattern you use. Uh, for instance, you, you have developer, uh, the developer name, whatever, and then um, a glob, you know, a star. And that person's branches, no matter what they are, would actually create a new branch, no matter what it was. And so we're gonna create filters that allow you to basically say, release star. Anything that's named release will end up creating a new instance for you automatically off your, off your FCM. Um, that, that sort of thing makes it really easy for us to actually do a single branch. So you just have a development branch. Um, that'll just rebuild every time you push to that. Um, similar to what Magento Cloud's doing, um, but a little different. Um, and then the life cycle around instances, you wanna make sure that um, you're not getting billed a lot. So as a developer, you don't want your developers just making an instance or 20 instances as they're working on something and having them live forever. So we're building a scheduling system that will basically allow them to live. They'll have a lease and then they'll suspend and then they'll sit there so that in case somebody had something working that they forgot about, they can get it back. Um, and there's a whole system around this suspension and deletion of, this, of the instances, the life cycle around them. Really cool because, um, you know, again, the cost wise, this could get very expensive if you had a lot of instances running. Um, and then, so, Originally, when we started this, uh, we had envisioned it in our original Stratus control panel. Um, then we wanted to do the PWA, so we started writing um, basically the new partner portal. So if you're a Mage Mojo partner, um, there'll be a new partner portal coming along, which has a lot of really cool features, better release notes, commission reports that are enhanced. All of these are actually really easy to build React components. And as we build out more of these components, we're gonna actually be able to do things like graphing on your billing and all sorts of great stuff. Um, and comparatively to the development that we had before where we were actually using Magento 1 as our, as our NOC and, um, and an Angular app, having everything unified is just gonna make the experience for the customers so nice. Um, so if you are gonna actually set up a hosting platform for Magento, you have to make sure that you have viable ways to, um, to build the customers. Um, and that's one of the things we want uh, feedback on. And uh, we'll come back to feedback here in a couple slides. There we go again. 
Okay, stratospheres. So these are projects, basically. These are typically linked with a lot of metadata, like the Git URL, maybe some credentials, maybe some like, you know, composer auth.json. There's a bunch of stuff, metadata that goes with, with a project. So um, at the project level, we've actually created the ability to at store this metadata and even um, in some cases the secrets. So we plan on making it very easy to um, plug in things that get into the environments if you need them, similar to the way Magento Cloud is doing the environment variables. Um, and then with that, you like I already talked about the abstracted main instance, and this is really an important uh, change to the, the hosting architecture. Having that there allows us to sync from remote hosts or, or wherever. Um, and, and again, that ZFS snapshot restore or send receive is, is very, very quick um, in the right instances. So um, de development instances are all created from that main instance. And that's, that's really different than I think a lot of people are used to. Um, the idea is pretty sound because uh, a lot of times when people are syncing from their production boxes, they're actually breaking them. Like a MySQL dump will lock tables, which will cause customers to see waiting at very least. So uh, depending on your database size, that could actually be pretty significant. And ZFS doesn't come with that overhead at all. We just have the snapshot. We just restore it. It's, it's totally non-relevant to the application. And yeah, syncing ZFS is just, just amazing. So... Um, our future roadmap, we, we want to have a really robust API. So say you want to tie uh, your automation to creating instances. We have an API for that. Say you want to create new users or add permissions. These are the sort of things that we, we want to um, give API access to. Uh, similar to the way uh, cloud or other platforms are doing it, uh, we probably will have a CLI tool that will allow you to uh, interact with that. So um, in addition to just the, the API access, there's still some stuff up in there. We want to get feedback on a lot of this stuff. So th that's really why I'm here is to engage people. So please, if you, if you have anything, uh, please see me. Um, so production deployments. Skipped over that part entirely because um, we, at this time, we want to build out the development side. So Stratus 3 is really focused on development, uh, but long-term after we get it off the ground, we're going to be able to do full builds uh, for production. And this would be including like custom build scripts. And we even want to go as far to use the ECE tools, which are used for cloud uh, to, to do this. So ECE tools are currently going through a transition. Uh, we're kind of waiting on them to finish that transition. Uh, should be soon. They're splitting Docker out of it and a couple other things and making the ECE tools basically available for all projects, not just cloud. So that that would be actually kind of cool. Um, there's, If you look on the GitHub, there's quite a bit of talk about it. Um, so once we do that, you'll be able to do production deployments using the same ECE tools. That, that way, if you're on cloud and you want development environments, it'll be super easy for you. It's the same thing. And we even want to go as far as using the Magento YAML file from cloud and everything else. All that's available, and, and they seem very amiable to the idea. So if you're on Magento Cloud, we'll be an ideal development hosting platform for you, probably sooner than cloud will be. Um, beta testers. How am I doing on time? Probably rush through these. That's good. No, no, I'm right on time, awesome. Um, so we're actively seeking beta testers. Um, right now, we're, we're not in a position to actually give you access, but another month or two, uh, and, we, and we will be. And if you're already a partner, there's a good chance we can actually get you in sooner than that. Um, applicants are gonna be based on, you know, whether they're a Mage Mojo partner or customer already, and uh, their experience with Magento development. We're really interested in agencies that wanna use this for, their development uh, platform because our idea here is to allow local environments to be used in the cloud. We want to make it so that you don't have to have VMware or wherever, uh, you know, local environments for your, for your developers. Everything comes stems from the same source. Um, so beta testing experience uh, in the past or, you know, good at feedback, those things are going to play in your favor. Um, and there is a place to apply apparently. Q&A, 
So who has questions? Talisha has a question. You can just yell. We're all friends here. No, but we need the recording of the question. So when you're pulling data from production to create a dev environment, you use the ZFS snapshot. Mm -hmm. And then how do you sanitize the database? That's just going to be SQL script, just like so normal. So it, it, runs, after, it yeah. runs after the snapshot? Yeah, there'll be a scrubber. Okay. And we have a default scrubber that will run on normal stuff, and then we'll allow the ability to modify that. Okay. And feel free to ignore this question if it's you know confidential, but are you using um, ZFS blocks for the copy because it's faster as opposed to doing all the files? Like the snapshots, the, using the blocks, right? Yeah, ZFS send yeah. receive, basically, okay. Okay, cool. to the new instance. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Come on, more questions. <laughs> Talish. <laughs> Sorry, if nobody else is going to ask questions. Um, so when you do uh, the development environment, is it possible for developers to say, I, I have this project running on PHP 7.2 on production, mm -hmm. okay? But, you know, 7.3 is coming. We want to be able to, like, make a branch and start testing on 7.3. Is, is that configurable for building a branch? for development. That's going to be part of that metadata. So like, I think that we're going to end up burying that in the same place cloud does, in the, in the Magento YAML. Okay. You know, the Magento app.yaml or whatever, the way cloud does it, because that way you have all your, uh, th it's the same, basically. Right. Yeah. But, uh, the ability to change like PHP versions will also be available. You'll still have a panel access to that development environment as well, so you can go in, flip it to one or the other, mm -hmm. flip it back um, to do easy testing that way as well. Um, from the merchant standpoint, that's already a uh, Stratus user. Um, mm -hmm. Is there much of an upgrade process between one to two? Is it sold as a different product or will all Stratus turn into Stratus 3? Marty? Um, yeah, um, it'll actually all be transitioned into Stratus 3. Um, really, what really just happens is one day you'll just have a project and you'll just have whatever instance it is, so you probably just will have either prod. There might be a dev tied to it, but they won't actually be linked yet until you go through the process of creating main and then make the new versions off of that. More questions? Done? All right. If there's no more questions, again, please feel free to see me. I'm happy to show you guys, uh, you know, a demo of the, the tool. We have a working version of it-ish, and I can show you Stratus Link and a couple other things. So I'll be here today and tomorrow. Feel free to find me.